guys, it's Ellie here. I'm Pharmacist and Cosmetic Formulator for Ellie Derm. And in today's video, we'll be talking to you or we'll be um, discussing on the, the various different forms of vitamin C that are available on the market and which one is suitable for you. one really cool little piece of information I'm dying to share. It's actually the half-life of vitamin C. So studies have shown that the half-life of vitamin C once it hits saturation in the skin is four days. So what does this actually mean? This essentially means that um, it takes four days for the concentration of vitamin C in your skin to break down by 50%. Um, so yeah, so four days for it to break down in 50, uh, by 50%. That just means that the vitamin C in the skin can last for a very long period of time. So how does that translate into practical terms? So um, from a practical standpoint, that essentially means that you don't really need to apply your vitamin C every single day once it hits saturation in the skin. And in fact, you can get away with, um, you know, applying your vitamin C every second or third day and get and still get a very similar result from your vitamin C. Um, now, my theory is the reason why no one is making that recommendation is because this is going to be very lifestyle dependent because we all know that vitamin C is broken down in the skin by UV light. Now, if you're somebody who works from home and has very little exposure to UV light, then the rate of vitamin C breakdown in your skin is going to be much less than somebody who works outdoors. So I guess it's a kind of advice that you can't give to everybody because it's not a one size fits all. So the four um, main vitamin C or four main to um, topical forms of vitamin C we would like to talk about today is um, L-ascorbic acid or ascorbic acid. And the second one is um, your sodium ascorbyl phosphate and then your magnesium ascorbyl phosphate. And the, the fourth one is tetrahexyl dexyl ascorbate. With L-ascorbic acid, um, this is the most bioavailable form of vitamin C. It's the most active form of vitamin C as well. Um, it works at around about a pH of 3.5, um, and that's where it's most stable as well as around about a pH of 3 to 3.5. Um, now, for, for at this pH, um, the, uh, um, the ionic charge of it is actually dissociated from the molecule so it just means that it is actually allowed it actually allows your the ascorbic acid to penetrate through the skin barrier and work you know in, in the skin and not just sits on top of the skin um, now unfortunately because vitamin c or ascorbic acid i should say is water soluble it should be formulated in an anhydrous or an oily formulation to actually increase the penetration in, into the deeper layers of the skin um, if you formulate ascorbic acid in an oil, in a water um, formulation, it's not going to have very good penetration into the skin. Um, and because it is formulated or it, it is most stable at a pH of around about 3 to 3.5, it can be very irritation, uh, irritating for a lot of um, Now, sodium ascorbic phosphate works well or works best at around about a pH 5.5 to 6. So this makes it very suitable for sensitive skin. Um, the other, um, you know, favorable thing about um, sodium ascorbyl phosphate is that not only is it suitable for sensitive skin, it's very easy to formulate with, it is water soluble. So um, the only issue with it being water soluble is that um, it can't penetrate very deep into the skin where it can, you know, so for that reason, it doesn't stimulate collagen synthesis or ceramide synthesis as well as ascorbic acid. Um, normally would and to help improve the penetration into the skin it is best to actually um, formulate it in an anhydrous formulation. So this next one is um, magnesium ascorbyl phosphate and it is one of our favorite um, form of vitamin C for a few different reasons. So number one is that it, um, it works at around a pH um, 6 which means that it's suitable for sensitive skin. It's um, you know water soluble but um, it also has a lip lipophilic nature as well, which allows it to actually penetrate into the dermis. And once it gets into the, der to the dermis, it actually does another cool thing where it gets converted into ascorbic acid. Now, once it's converted to ascorbic acid, it then is able to stimulate collagen synthesis and also ceramide synthesis. Um, yeah, so this one works best at a pH of about five to six. Um, now, the best thing about this is that it's lipophilic, which means it loves oil. So it's able to penetrate, you know, straight through the stratus corneum and into the dermis without any issues at all. And it also gets converted into ascorbic acid as well. Um, and in fact, more of it gets converted into ascorbic acid compared to 
magnesium ascorbyl phosphate itself. So why do we still prefer magnesium ascorbyl phosphate over tetradexal ascorbate? Well, the reason is because if you are prone to acne, um, then the tetrahexyl dexal ascorbate can, um, you know, can potentially cause acne by because it is a little bit too oily. Um, so it's not gonna happen to everybody, but it just has that extra risk of, you know, um, of causing acne. Um, and for that reason, you know, I don't, you know, I, I prefer the oil, um, the actual water soluble form um, of vitamin C, which is a magnesium ascorbyl phosphate. Um, but nonetheless, there's going to be some applications or some formulations where the tetrahexyl dexal ascorbate is going to be much preferred and it's going to yield a much better result as a, you know, because for the, for the, the fact that it's lipophilic in nature and that a higher percentage of it gets converted to ascorbic acid. If you're looking for antioxidant um, effects only, then with your vitamin C, you only need a 0.5 to 1%. Um, now, if you're looking to help boost collagen synthesis or help to treat hyperpigmentation, then I would recommend going for a formulation which contains um, you know, anywhere from 10 to 20% vitamin C. You make sure the formulation contains other antioxidants as well. So other um, ingredients or other antioxidants um, to look out for in vitamin C formulations are things like vitamin E, resveratrol, green tea extract, um, glutathione, CoQ10, um, ferulic acid. Uh, yeah, so all these are really great vitamin, um, all these are really great antioxidants to pair with your vitamin C. Um, because as you, as we mentioned earlier, when you pair more than one antioxidant together, they all work in synergy. They're going to boost each other, you know, they're going to boost each other up and you're going to get a much better result or much better outcome by having more than one antioxidant in your formulation. I hope you found this video useful and it answers all your questions about topical vitamin C. And if you do like it, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, and also hit the subscribe button so you'll be notified of new videos when they come out. And if we can please get you to do us a little favor as well, and that is to drop in any, you know, um, in the comments below, any topics or questions that you have. Um, and it could be on any topic um, that, you know, where we can actually, you know, um, contribute or use our pharmacy knowledge to, to help you. Um, that would be really good because it just gives me a bit of an idea on what our next video should be because chances are if you have that question, there's going to be other people who actually also have the same question. Um, so you also be helping other people as well.